What is up, everybody? It is JT Sports. I'm back to you guys with my Cincinnati Bengals seven round mock draft. Before I get into it, make sure that you guys like the video and subscribe to the channel because I upload NFL videos and college football videos daily. So this is my second mock draft for the Cincinnati Bengals. I had to make a second one because the one I made a couple of weeks ago was prior to free agency. Now that free agency has taken place, I had to make another one to reflect what happened in free agency. And for the Cincinnati Bengals, I'm really interested in seeing how they attack the draft because I think for Cincinnati, I think they should spend their first two picks of this year's draft on improving the offensive line because I'm tired of going back and forth with Cincinnati Bengals fans about how big of a need the offensive line is, which is why... I have the Cincinnati Bengals with the fifth overall selection taking off the tackle out of Oregon, Penny Sewell. Now, the reason why I think that the Cincinnati Bengals need to take Penny Sewell is because he is dramatically going to improve their off the line at off the tackle. Now, a lot of Bengals fans either want Kyle Pitts or Jamar Chase, which is understandable, but you got to understand something. Which one is a bigger need? Off the tackle or wide receiver? Because the Cincinnati Bengals have Tyler Boyd, who has had two 1,000 yard seasons. He's proven that he can be the number one wide receiver without AJ Green on top of that you had T Higgins who was one of the best rookie wide receivers last year so you do have wide receivers it's not like you just are you know paper thin at the wide receiver position you do have a pretty good group of wide receivers and you can address that in the later rounds okay like, I understand Jamar Chase is a generational talent but also you gotta understand this which one equates to more wins a wide receiver or off the tackle it is a passing lead did you see how Kansas City lost his Super Bowl did Kansas City lose the Super Bowl because they didn't have a lot of wide receivers or is it because they were missing two of their starting off the tackles I think the biggest reason why they lost Super Bowl was because they were missing two of their starting off the tackles so you see how Kansas City lost the Super Bowl they lost the Super Bowl because they couldn't win up front they got dominated up front on both sides of the football so if you're Cincinnati okay if Joe Burrow says okay I want Jamar Chase then you draft Jamar Chase but if you ask Joe Burrow what he wants and he says it's up to you guys I think you should take off his tackle look I understand you want to reunite Joe Burrow with his LSU teammates and if that's okay with him then okay but at the end of the day Okay, you should focus on protecting your franchise quarterback. You can find good wide receivers that are starting Cobra later in the later rounds of the draft. I just don't understand how Bengals fans can be okay with drafting Jamar Chase at wide receiver fifth overall when their starting quarterback just got you know his season ended because of poor off the line play and i know injuries happening things like that but he could have had a better chance of playing through the whole entire season if he had a better off the line but if you're okay with having scrubs like bobby hart starting at off the tackle to protect joe burrow then that's why the cincinnati Bengals are where they are as a franchise right now not winning anything because until the Bengals front office and Bengals fans realize that if you want to win you have to be able to win up front you're never going to win anything you play in the AFC North the AFC North has two of two teams that have two top 10 defense lines you have the Pittsburgh Steelers who have a top five defense line you have the Baltimore Ravens who have a top 10 defense line and you also have the Cleveland Browns whose defense line is up there as well so in terms of that where does your off the line stack up in terms of being able to defend against some of the better defense lines in the NFL you have two teams in the division let alone that have two top 10 defense lines and yet you rather draft a wide receiver instead of giving Joe Burrow some much needed off the line help are you serious? Are you kidding me right now? But until people realize that football is about how good you can win in the trenches, people aren't really going to realize how important the offensive line is until Joe Burrow keeps on getting injured. And if you keep on, God forbid, he may end up like Andrew Luck. So I'm just saying... I think the Cincinnati Bengals would be making a big mistake if they select Kyle Pitts or Jamar Chase over off the tackle Penny Sewell. Being average isn't good enough to win you any games. Having an average off the line definitely doesn't win you any games in the AFC North. When you're going against two out of the top 10 teams who have top 10 defensive lines, I think Penny Sewell, if I'm the general manager for the Cincinnati Bengals, I'm drafting Sewell fifth overall instead of Jamar Chase or Kyle Pitts. Focus on that in the later rounds. In the second round, 38th over, I have them going off the line again. Off the guard, Deontay Brown out of Alabama. In my opinion, he has over-exceeded Wyatt Davis as the best offensive guard 
in the day two. So we know that Veritek is pretty much the um, best officer guard, but I think right behind him is Deontay Brown. He's 6'3", 344 pounds, great size. He has pretty good quickness. He's a disciplined worm blocker. He was great against Derrick Brown in 2019. Only thing is that he's a little bit slow when it comes to pulling. But other than that, I think that if you draft Deontay Brown, you're going to have two day one starters on your off the line that can start and have pretty good success right away as rookies. You're going to have off the tackle pitch as well and you're going to have officer guard Deontay Brown you're going to have two guys that you can get in the first two rounds of this draft that is going to dramatically improve your offensive line and give Joe Burrow some more protection Round 3, 69th over, I have them selecting wide receiver out of USC, Amon St. Brown. Amon St. Brown is six foot, 197 pounds. He's a solid route runner, great body control. He's great after the catch as well. Only thing is that after the catch, you know, he doesn't really have a lot of um, shiftiness in his game. He's not really all that agile. If you ask me, I think a good comp for him is Michael Pittman. He reminds me of a lot of Michael Pittman. They have similar traits. You know, they were both pretty decent route runners, but I think that Amon St. Brown could come in. He could possibly be the wide receiver four or wide receiver three for Cincinnati this year. And round 4, 120, 112th overall, cornerback Kelvin Johnson out of Kentucky. I think it's a little bit of a sleeper prospect in this year's draft. Now, I don't really know where he's going to go because he's rumored to go between late. He could either go late first round, early second, round three, or round four. So don't really know where he's going to fall in the draft. It's pretty much a toss-up. But also, he's a pretty good length. He has great game. He had a great game against Alabama, um, and that's really something that has we know that when you think about all the weapons that they have there, especially going against Devontae Smith, he had an interception. He was targeted three times and only allowed two catches. He also has great ball skills. He's a good tackler. The only thing is that he doesn't really have that much experience, but experience is something that can be easily gained with more reps and more playing time and more repetition in practice. So moving on to the other rounds, round 550th overall, I have them select in wide receiver out of Florida State University, Tamarion. Terry. Now, Tamari on Terry, before the 2020 college football season began, he was going in the first round by pretty much everybody in the mock draft community. Now, he had a forgetful 2020 year, but let's just forget about 2020 because he was held back by a knee injury. He's 6'3", 207 pounds. This guy is a big, explosive, deep threat with great speed. Now, the only thing is that he has a limited route tree. He's inconsistent as well when it comes to, you know, catching the football. He reminds me a lot of Allen Robinson coming out of the pin. State, and if you look at the upside and potential that he has, I mean, this is a major still to get a guy of this kind of talent in the fifth round of the draft. This is normally a guy who will end up going around to pretty much late round pretty much late in the first so if you're Cincinnati you're going to have the potential to draft two solid wide receivers one that could be your wide receiver four wide receiver three and Tamari Ontario is good enough to be a wide receiver one if need be that's his upside so I really like Tamari Ontario I like the size I like the speed he has the potential to be one of the best deep threats in the NFL and I think his upside his high floor is pretty much Allen Robinson and round 691st overall linebacker Monte Rice I think He's not the best prospect, but I think he has a lot of potential that he could end up being a really good backup, a contributor on special teams. But maybe he could be a starter for Cincinnati because he has good instincts, very good against the run. Um, he sees running lanes and attacks them really well as well. He's good at avoiding traffic. He isn't really that aggressive. He doesn't really make a lot of plays behind the line. But for Cincinnati, I think you need to keep on drafting linebackers until you're finally able to find some guys that are actually able to give you some better production because Cincinnati has had one of the worst linebacker groups for over the last three seasons and I think Monte Rice I mean even though he's getting drafted in the sixth round I mean he could start he could not but at the end of the day he could be pretty good on special teams and I think he could provide solid depth but for Cincinnati I think you have to keep drafting linebackers until you're finally able to get it right with their second six round selection 203rd overall officer guard Shandon Herring out of BYU has incredible size. He's 6'7", 310 pounds, very good length. He has 
um a very good ability to finish once he gets to the second level once he gets into the linebacker group he's also a very good finisher normally puts a lot of guys on the ground he needs to improve his footwork but this is a guy who can come in and give you some more depth maybe he can develop into a solid starter it may take a couple of seasons maybe two three at the most but i think shannon harry you do have some potential there and this is what you're looking for in round six round seven of the draft you're looking for guys who can come in be good backers but also provide you a pretty good depth as well if need be and that's what hearing can do out of byu and with their last selection of this year's NFL Draft, 236 overall in the seventh round, have them selecting defensive the tackle Clinton Bohana out of Kentucky. He's 6'4", 372 pounds. This guy is a run stopper supreme. This guy is a space eater, a gap clogger, whatever you want to call him. This guy takes up a lot of space. He's nearly 400 freaking pounds. The only thing about him is that you only are going to have him down on, you know, third and short fourth and inches goal line situations because he's not that much of a threat of a pass rusher but he does remind me a lot of events will for this guy is huge clogs up a lot of running lanes takes up a lot of space and i think cincinnati probably could bring him in see if he's good enough to make the roster and then you have a guy who can come in on rundowns which is something that cincinnati's defense struggled defending against last year so this is it for my cincinnati Bengals seven round mock draft let me know what you guys think about it down in the comment section down below make Make sure that you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel for more NFL videos.